Hey guys, welcome to Coding After 30. In this video, I want to talk about everything you need to know to get your first junior web development job. Now, this is based on my experience, so take it for what it is, just another guy's experience. But I just want to give you my journey so you kind of get an idea of what it's like and what it takes. Now, before I get into this video, I just want to say that I don't have a college degree. I didn't go to boot camp. I was self-taught and it was not an easy journey for me. Maybe there are people that in three, four months were able to get a job making $150,000 a year, but it was not the case for me. And so I just want to be honest with you about my experience so you could have another perspective of what it takes to get your job. And with that being said, if you're new to this channel, my name is Paul and I talk about switching careers into web development late in life. So if this is something that interests you, consider subscribing. All right, before I get into everything you need to know, I just wanna say that there's a lot to getting your first job outside of just knowing the skills. A big part and 80% of the reason why I got this job is the fact that I always pushed my networking. I went to meetups, I met people, a lot of my friends that I made and started hanging out with were in the web development field. And the way I got this opportunity for my job is I read knew somebody that worked at a company and they were able to put in a good word to their boss about me and so when I reached out to them getting the interview was easy it's not because of something I did but it's because I had a good referral and the hiring manager at the company trusted that other person and basically was willing to give me a chance so getting to that interview I would say that part of it was luck and a lot of it was being able able to social network and build connections with people that could help to give me a referral or put in a good word for me. Don't underestimate power of networking. Now, when I got to the interview, I had to obviously prove myself. I was surprised because of the recommendation I got. The interview was more casual and I was asked about my resume and my past experience, but I was never asked about my portfolio. And I think that I got lucky in that sense. And this is why I tell you getting a good referral to be able to get your first job is huge. So whenever it's possible definitely take advantage of it and that's why I still say I got lucky now don't get me wrong would I still have my job if I didn't know what I was doing after two weeks of working there the answer is no so you do have to know what you're doing so the job that I applied to was being a react front-end developer and when I got to the interview I talked about my experience what I've done in the past and I also talked about all the technologies that I know which was HTML CSS Java JavaScript and React. Now, one of the questions that I got at the interview, if I was familiar with styled components and Redux. If you're just starting out with React, maybe you haven't heard of those things, but what I would tell you and suggest to you that those two things, they're not as uncommon as they're more common. So if you learn styled components and if you learn how to work with Redux, you don't have to be a master at it. I'm not a master at it either, but I'm able to look through the like, documentation and be able to implement it in the project. So as a bare minimum, I needed to know those things, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, style components, and Redux. Now, when I got hired and I started my job, the things that they don't tell you is that you have to be familiar with the development environment that you're going to work with. And so in our company, we worked in Windows. We used Azure to manage our projects. We had a Git repository. So the second most important thing outside of knowing what you're doing is you have to be familiar in the terminal and being able to use Git and being able to push or pull code, merge code, make changes. It is a very important part of what you are going to do. On top of that, our front-end application obviously works with an API that is connected to a database. So even though I was never asked about this on the interview, I quickly realized that I was expected to know how to be able to work with the existing API and the endpoints, but I was also required to be able to go into to the database, in our case it was SQL, and be able to check the data that I'm writing to the data table by writing queries, being able to look stuff up and see the changes that I'm doing. 
doing. So if you're learning web development and you might just say, I'm going to be a front-end web development, that's it. That's perfectly fine. But nowadays, there's no such a thing just a front-end web development. Sometimes when they say you're a front-end development, but you should be able to understand back-end technologies, like how to connect to an API, how to work with a database. If you're not doing anything with databases, and the most common one is MySQL, and so you should be familiar with MySQL, the basics of SQL query language, and definitely check when you're applying to jobs what stack they're using. So with that being said, as you could see, it's not just learn HTML and CSS and JavaScript. Nowadays, that is not enough to get hired. So a quick review, you need to know HTML, CSS, JavaScript, one JavaScript framework, in my case it was React, and you had to understand some of the common technologies used in React. In our case, I had to know how to use and be comfortable with React hooks, with styled components, and using a state management library like Redux, which is a lot. And on top of that, I had to understand how to connect to our API, and I had to be able to see the changes that I'm making in the database by going to our SQL server and doing query search on the table, finding that table that I wrote the data to and being able to see it. So that's a lot of things that you guys had to know. On top of me getting a job, there was one requirement that my boss told me. He said, look, I'm going to hire you, but on one condition, if you're willing to learn C Sharp so you could start working on our backend API. And I think in my case, because I was applying to a smaller company, most of the developers there, they were full stack developers. And so part of my requirement to keep this job is to start learning ASP.NET and C Sharp from day one. Now, this might not be your experience. You might be getting a job at a bigger company where you know, you're just gonna do front end. But what I want you guys to know there's no such a thing as pure front end anymore or pure back end. You might be pure front end and what that means is that you understand and you work in the front end and that's where most of your experience is but you also understand the back end and the API, how to connect the API and you understand basic knowledge working with databases. Where same thing if you're a back end developer it doesn't just mean that you just spend your life in that back end. You understand the front end enough in the context that allows you to to do your backend work. So there's a lot to learn. And for some of you guys listening to this, you guys are gonna be overwhelmed and be like, I'll never learn this. And that's something that I thought. I thought I will never get to a point where any of this makes sense. And my first two months of my job were very difficult and I had to come home and spend all my waking free time trying to figure out what I was doing. And after seven months working at the company, I still don't feel like I know everything, but somehow I'm getting my work done and I'm meeting my requirements. So if you're just starting out and you're learning and you're trying to get into web development, I just want you to have an opinion. And again, maybe it's much easier than my path was. And I don't know, but this was my path. But I want you guys to have realistic expectations and to understand that it's not as easy as, you know, doing something for three months and expecting to get a job where you make $150,000. Listen, it didn't take me three months and I'm definitely not making $150,000. But at the end of the day, I just want to say it's well worth it and I'm so glad even though I'm 40 years old now I still think about it that I have another 15 years to devote to this position and to devote to my love of coding and you really have to love it to do it because it's almost 1 a.m. here and I'm making this video talking about coding and after I make this video I'm probably gonna spend another two hours learning new things something that will help me to continue to increase my value as a developer and if you're not the type of person that is able to constantly keep learning because you feel like I want to learn something once and just reap the benefits of it. That's not how web development or programming works. It is constant learning every day because technologies change. So if you're looking to get into this career for a quick, easy money, it is definitely not easy. And I would argue there are probably some other jobs that you could do that will be a better fit. But if you love it and you find joy and feeling of accomplishment whenever you solve a problem, Problem, then this might be for you, but it's definitely not for everybody. And I used to think that anybody could learn to code, and I think anybody can learn to code, but 
not anybody could sit in front of the computer day and night typing away you know it might not be in your personality so you really have to enjoy it so anyway I hope you found some value in this video I know I'm just babbling on because it's late I'm tired but I think it is valuable to get real opinions not just from some YouTube celebrity that's pushing courses or selling courses just because that's what they do and maybe one day that's gonna be me but until now until I make it I'm right in the trenches I'm struggling through just like everybody else uh, you know getting started so I just want to say when you first starting out if you don't have a degree maybe you didn't go to boot camp you have to understand you're competing with other people that have degrees went to boot camps a degree is a four year even though it's a piece of paper it's a piece of paper that says you did something for four years so when you're looking to get hired as a junior web development you have to understand that if you don't have a degree you have to find other ways to show an equivalence of that degree and that's usually with your portfolio being able to showcase everything you know so with that being said I just want to say thank you for watching some dude on the internet talk about his experience part of the reasons why I started this channel is because I really want to give you a real experience of what it's like so you guys could make the best decisions and have realistic expectation at the end of the day it is really difficult but it's totally worth it so thanks for watching I'll see you guys later